I've just started another batch of compost tea. It's approximately 55 gallons. And I'm gonna be adding biochar to it, which will be used as a direct soil amendment in about 48 hours. I'm gonna remove this char that's been in here for a couple of weeks now, and I'm gonna crush it down and add it to a compost tea brew. The nice thing about having the char with this amount of water already on board is during the crushing process, it's going to reduce, if not all but eliminate, the amount of airborne particulates that's going to come off the char. And I would like to point out that char, once it's been placed in the soil, isn't necessarily a consideration with regard to inhalation hazard. However, when you're crushing it, it is something that you really want to try to avoid breathing in. So either wear some form of respiratory protection or stand completely upwind. Now, as I look down into this, there are some chunks that are resting on the bottom. It's extremely heavy. It's completely hydrophilic. Once I pull this out, I'll put another few buckets of char in here. Sounds like Rice Krispies. It's gonna take time for water to fully absorb into all this material. It's very porous. I'm screening out all the chunks larger than a half an inch and they'll wind up just getting dumped into this compost ring. Chickens will have the opportunity to kind of work it over and it'll further undergo the process of inoculation. I don't want these larger chunks getting stuck in the orifice where my compost tea comes out so I wanted it to be fairly refined going in. This will just get washed into this compost ring and it won't get wasted. About a third of a bucket, maybe a little bit more. I'll be adding the entirety of it to this compost tea. I've retrieved a bit of compost tea out of here, and I'm gonna be using that to rinse out this bucket. has to be screened fairly well so that I'll be able to get it out of that valve at the bottom. It's about 48 hours later since I started this batch of tea and added the char. Let's take a look and see what it's looking like. Yeah, with the temperatures that we've had, it's really warm. This tea doesn't need to be in here any longer than 48 hours. There's a decent chance this might be clogged up. So we'll take that. Use a screwdriver, get her started.
I generally do this about a couple of times a year, at least minimum to these beds. I'll do a five gallon bucket per treatment. And then I will go ahead and water this in because compost tea is a living organism. And I wanna make sure that all of these living microbes get down into the soil and don't just die on the surface. So I'll apply it and then I'll come through and I'll hand water it. A lot of times when I make a batch of tea, I'll keep a little bit of it back so that I can utilize it to hydrate some of my potted plants. Really gives some of my trees and some of the transplants that I have a really solid boost. And what I'll do is just submerge them underwater until there's no more bubbles coming out at minimum. That way I can be assured that they're fully hydrated. combination of compost tea and biochar over time can make a pretty effective soil amendment. Compost tea introduces a pretty complex array of microorganisms including bacteria, fungi, and other soil life. And biochar acts as a sponge by holding on to water, nutrients, and providing a habitat for the microorganisms. All of this biochar has been now fully inoculated and will just add to the water and nutrient retentive qualities of these beds and over time we'll get covered up with more compost and more mulch. If you're interested in learning more about how I made this compost tea brewer, I'll link right here to a video showing how I did that, and I also included a recipe for one of my compost tea brews. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.